And welcome back to The Daily Wrap. The rest of our panel has now joined us. To my right, she's the founder and executive director of the Accountability Project, Nomiki Konst is here. And to <laughs> her right, she's an anchor for The Blaze TV and part of Sag Harbor's cultural elite. <laughs> oh. Amy Holmes joins the panel. Welcome, guys. You're still what? on that, huh? I'm still on that. We're going <laughs> to stick with it. We, if we like it, we stay with it. All right, so the chance of a Trump third-party candidacy appears to have vanished today as Donald Trump signed a pledge stating that he would not run as a third-party candidate while further agreeing to support the eventual nominee of the Republican Party. I have signed the pledge. Yeah. So I will be totally pledging my allegiance to the Republican Party and the conservative principles for which it stands. The agreement to keep Mr. Trump within the GOP, win or lose, came after a morning meeting at the Trump offices with Republican National Chairman Reince Priebus. In a press conference called to announce the accord, Trump went out of his way to say that the party had offered him nothing in exchange for his pledge, leaving himself what would appear to be very little wiggle room should he wish to recant on the promise in the event he fails to achieve his party's nomination. However, we are talking about Donald Trump, where the rules don't ever seem to be quite the same as they are for everyone else. Joe, can we completely believe that the Donald will honor his pledge should he end up losing the nomination? Can I answer your question with a question? Sure. Have you ever seen anything like this before? No. You, you have no free will. You have to sign that you will never run as a third party candidate. It's insane. It's pretty weird. Jake Tapper's probably upset because CNN has the next debate and he can't pull a Brett Baer and say, raise your hands. And the same thing with this one. This is a about to take that off the table right well it's it's interesting i actually know I me mean, i looked at the the document mm -hmm. okay there's nothing i can find i'm an old lawyer right i can't find any legal obligation no. right. so he can it's almost like making a pledge to give money yeah. to a charity there's nothing they can do if you don't do it and actually all the other republican ca candidates claim to have also signed it but no one cared no you know thousand yeah where are they going to exactly go? we're all with thousand press press members of the press didn't show up at their you know right. signing of and by the way it was the wrong date so i'd like to know maybe he signed this a month ago I Did you know that? Know they signed that. August. Yeah. He signed the wrong date. We didn't actually see him sign it. This is a conspiracy no, theory in action, by the way. <laughs> Amy, uh, give us a quickie on this. Do you think he will honor it or not if he loses the nomination? If he loses, well, he promised to stop attacking Megyn Kelly. And he started and he right back right up, up again, again. There you have when it. she got back from her vacation. As I think Donald Trump is the master of wiggling. And he <laughs> has wiggled himself to the front of the line when it comes to the GOP primary uh, race with all of this. As you say, it's not legally binding. I can certainly see him trumping up a context to rip it in half. Wordplay. So, so it was likely only a matter of time, you guys, until Trump finally got around to insulting yet another of his opponents looking for the GOP. Not this time, it was Ben Carson on the receiving end of a charm offensive Trump style. In an interview with the Daily Caller, Trump had this to say, I think it's a very difficult situation that he'd be placed in. He's really a friend of mine. I just think it's a very difficult situation that he puts himself into. To have a doctor who wasn't creating jobs and and would have a nurse or maybe two nurses. In other words, he's never managed anything. He's only been in charge of a nurse or two. My is, question is, is, is this, this one of Donald will, Trump's fantasies? What will, is he talking about? Will the Trump base, who also have positive feelings towards Ben Carson, will they react well to this comment? Let's go with Nomi on this. Or will they have a problem with it? I actually think they're not reacting well to Trump. I think that the people who would possibly side with Trump that might be a little bit more reasonable, might want a little bit of a toned down rhetoric, are going to Carson and they won't react well to Trump. The difference is, after this press conference, Trump has changed his entire conversation. He didn't get into immigration. He deflected on a lot of conservative um, issues that were brought up as a question. He got into a, a little bit of immigration. A little bit, but he was much more reasonable. He sounded like he was proposing a more comprehensive, uh, except for the wall, uh, plan for, for immigration reform. 
he was only talking about jobs. Towards the end, he he basically said, "I will be your your leader, and I will help you create jobs." Well, actually, Nomi's got a point there, Joe. You know, sitting there at the press conference, there you could noticeably tell there was some shift. He was going towards the jobs thing. You think that we're now reaching the point in the Trump campaign where he's trying to get away from his rather extreme immigration position and move towards jobs? It's only so many ways you could describe building a wall, right? And this wall, by the way, would go from Key West to Maine. It's it's that's quite a Wall. Yes. So, yes. On the East Coast? Uh, on the East, oh, yeah, of course, the East Coast. What are you talking about? Not along <laughs> Mexico? Yeah. Anyway, anyway, Rick. You know what I mean. It would be that long, <laughs> just to put it in perspective. Uh, the point is that Donald Trump's strength is that he has been a good businessman. You know, he has made those billions of dollars somewhere. He brings the bankruptcies, but overall, he's, he's hitting pretty well right now. So, changing the conversation is the way to go. And he has a point about Ben Carson. What is Ben Carson's business experience? What jobs has he ever created? Well, but why, why is it, Amy, why would business experience be the relevant thing? None right. of them have any political experience. Trump doesn't have it. Carson doesn't have it. Carly Fiorina doesn't have it. Why is he picking on Ben Carson for not being a businessman now? Well, because being a business person is Donald Trump's Trump card. But mm -hmm. his insult of Dr. Carson about the nurses, it sounds more like one of Donald Trump's midnight fantasies <laughs> than uh, well, an actual, male nurses, right, than an, than an actual uh, political critique. I think that Ben Carson's fans are actually going to ignore it, that this is going to be gone with the summer, uh, you know, with with September or August, rather. Uh, but the point being, when he, when he insults Jeb Bush on low energy, that's, that really hits. Well, what I want to know is who is your pick for the 2016 GOP nomination? You got to let us know at NewsmaxPolls.com and be sure to get your copy of Ben Carson's book, One Nation, getting it absolutely free. All you have to do is pay $4.95 to cover the cost of shipping. You can do it by calling 1-800-485-4350. That's 1-800-485-4350 or visit Newsmax.com slash Ben and do it right now. Coming up next, a Clinton aide is taking the fifth. We'll tell you why.